Hi, I'm Lisa Gay Donner, along with Andrew Moran, Scott Cosenza, Graham Noble, and Jeff Charles. And this is the Conservative Five, Liberty Nation's online TV news program. Jesse Smollett, the former up and coming actor, is planted in a courtroom in Chicago accused of manufacturing a hate crime where he played the starring role of victim. Prosecutors allege the actor on the once popular but now canceled Fox show Empire engineered an attack by paying a couple of bodybuilding brothers to rough him up on purpose. It turns out Smollett just wanted a little bit of publicity, but he took it too far and even paid the men by check for their services. Oh, okay. This case is so bizarre. It's finally gone to court after Smollett was originally given a pass by a uh, state's attorney. I think it was Kim Fox. Anyway, she dropped the charges, gave him 16 hours of community service and, and kept the $10,000 bond, which now has put Fox in a lot of hot water. Scott, Scott, give us a skinny on this made for TV drama. This is just crazy stuff. The uh, the important name, Lisa, I think to uh, to remember in this case is Nene Uche. That is the name of uh, uh, Mr. Smollett's lawyer. And if he manages to get a acquittal <laughs> on this case, the mountain of evidence, including the day before when they did a uh, a walk through or drive through pre assault uh, that combined with the text messages, the canceled check, as you mentioned, uh, then he will go down in history as one of the best lawyers ever, uh, ever to live. It's a slam dunk of a case if there ever was one. Mr. Smollett is clearly just uh, to his dying breath, I guess, going to deny that he, he did this, uh, this race hate hoax. Uh, and that's where things stand. Jeff, you, you've got a posse of friends in, in the conservative circles. What's the drumbeat on the Jesse trial? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Scott. I mean, if this defense attorney gets Jesse off, I he, this this would be a, 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 an accomplishment of Johnny Cochran-like proportions. But I would say that the most important name right now is Osendero, because this was one of the brothers that participated in the plot, and he took the stand yesterday, and he laid the whole thing out from start to finish about how Jesse helped them pay for the uh, for the equipment that they were going to use to stage this attack. He talked about how they basically participated because he thought it was going to help him with his acting career. And they did, like Scott said, they went through the dry run, all that. This was planned out to the T and this guy laid the whole thing out. And the defense, the defense is ar essentially arguing that these two brothers beat up Jesse because they didn't like him or because they were homophobic and they disguise themselves as MAGA people to make sure that they weren't identified. I, I don't think that's going to work. I mean, this is not st stacked in Jesse's favor by any stretch of the imagination. However, I think if he is convicted, he's probably not going to serve much time. I mean, he, the maximum is three years, but you know, he doesn't have a criminal record. He's got a lot of money. I'm sure he'll get a slap on the wrist for this, but his reputation is irreparably damaged at this point. Yeah. Isn't the actual charge, uh, Scott, it's, it's an odd, like disturbing the peace or something? Yes, that's how Illinois has fashioned their basically false reporting statute under the disturbing uh, the peace statutes. All right, Andrew, I, he I'm did sure, a dry a run. You got you to gotta help us out here. He did a dry run. That's just crackers. I have to ask this question. I have to ask this question. Jeff says that Jussi Smollett, as Dave mm -hmm. Chappelle would say, it did this for his acting career. But he was in the Mighty Ducks movie when he was eight years old. Should not cement him to legendary status already? What? The, what, what why would he need to Canada, do that? Canada, Andrew, perhaps. In the United States of America, no, we have not uh, elevated that picture to uh, iconic status. At least not what's, yet. What's sad is that he was one of the more popular characters on that show. When, when I watched it, I actually liked his character. He was one of my favorites. I, 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 it boggles my mind that he even did this in the first place. He wanted, I, I he that... wanted, his contract was up for renewal. The he a, a letter arrived previous to this incident. Now, right. people like many people like myself believe he sent the letter or had somebody else send it the sort of face a fake race uh, hoax threat by letter to kind of drum up a publicity around him. Well, and wait, isn't that important. if you send himself in the mail, isn't that like an, you know, an FBI kind of crime? It is a federal crime, Lisa. And the feds investigated it and decided not to pursue it. So oh, oh uh, okay. the FBI was too busy hunting down uh, Donald Trump's Russia uh, connection and perhaps to, uh, All to right. address that. Andrew, you're chomping yeah. at the bit. 
Yeah, yeah, because I'm going to provide my expertise. I know Scott's the expert in legality, so I'm going to go for my expertise. And I'm going to say that this is stories about economics, not just law, just not just legal, because this is a perfect example of a huge demand of race related hoax crimes. Like the Federal Reserve, these people are creating this artificial supply to meet this, you know, to meet, to meet this immense, a mass, massive demand for racism because the racism, you know, it, it's there, but it's not as immense as the media want it to be. So these people are just providing, providing all this fake supply, you know, like the money, like the like the money supply in the, the Eccles building. I remember a few years ago before COVID, there was this uh, Muslim girl in Toronto, and she said that somebody cut her hijab, and everyone was outraged. And Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, he was crying on camera, saying, "Oh, how could you do this? Turn out to be a hoax." New York City a couple of years ago, same thing. The girl said, oh, someone, you know, assaulted me. Someone had cut my hijab. It was this Trump supporter. And once again, it turned out to be hoax. I think the best way now to judge if something's a hoax is if the victim, if the perpetrator is, if the accused perpetrator is wearing a MAGA hat, you know, it's a fake hate crime. And Graham, is it fair enough to say we can go all the way back to Tawana Brawley or am I? That name did come to mind when we were talking about the, uh, the hate crime hoaxes, of course. And that's the most infamous one for which... Uh, the Reverend Al Sharpton has never been uh, held accountable for his part in that. But this whole, you know, this whole thing with uh, Jesse Smollett, uh, as the kids like to say these days, I can't even. I mean, it's it, it's just <laughs> ridiculous. It's it's much funnier than the than the NASCAR garage pull down thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> because at least one could think, well, okay, maybe that was a genuine mistake. Maybe the guy really did believe someone had put a noose up in his NASCAR garage, you know. But this one was, you know, just engineered from the very beginning to be ridiculous. Like the first time I ever heard of this attack, that. Somehow in Chicago, of all places, at two in the morning during the winter, there are Trump supporters wearing MAGA hats prowling the streets looking for, for it never for, passed the smell test from the blacks first, from to the first attack. Go I mean, <laughs> and they watch well, the, the, the way I, the way I Trump's one of where watches watches Empire, yeah. yeah. No, but that's the thing that, that that's what tipped me off actually. The fact that they that they, they supposedly said this is MAGA country, and the fact that Jesse Smollett said that these people recognize him, say, Aren't you on that Empire show? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's me and maybe five other people in the conservative movement who actually watched Empire. So mm-hmm. that right there, once he said that, I'm like, Nope, this is fake. There's absolutely no way that any MAGA person is going to know that he was on that show because. People on the right don't watch that show. I mean, it, it just, it's just for the, yeah. record, the, for the record on the Bubba Wallace thing, by the way, it wasn't a noose. A, 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 the most important function of a noose is, is the slipknot part that allows somebody to hang somebody by. It all wasn't right. A noose. All right. It was we a know. Hold. We know. We know. So, so Bubba's not a hoax. He's a moron. That, that, is, that, is, that the, is that what you Scott's telling Andrew. us here? <laughs> Well, uh, you know, we'll let you know if Jesse survives the Chicago courtroom this week. Thanks for tuning in and check out LibertyNation.com for all of Jesse Smollett's trials, trials, trials and tribulations. That's it for our Conservative 5 panel today. Check out our other C5 shows and segments on your favorite video platform. YouTube, Vimeo, Rumble, we're on the wall. As well, Liberty Nation has its own Roku channel where you can see all of our TV productions. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember, surf on over to LibertyNation.com. Sign up to our new member zone. We have a Christmas special running. Special thanks to our fantastic editor and post coordinator, Frank DiOrio, and our executive producer, Sarah Cowgill. I'm Lisa K. Donner, Editor-in-Chief. Thanks for joining us today. This has been a production of LibertyNation.com, where truth is making a comeback.